Hey guys, and welcome to this tutorial to learn how to program your Phoenix 4200 controller. I'm going to give you a rundown on all the really cool things you can do with your 4200 and how to set them up. So first we'll need to download the programming software. It's a free download available on our website. The software currently only works with Windows computers, no Mac compatibility. So just make sure you have a Windows computer. Also want to make sure you have a Phoenix 4200 data link. The part number is 4200-DL. If you have the older version of the 4200, then you're going to need the older version of the software. Uh, if you already have the software installed and you're not sure which one you have, just click this information button here. You want to make sure you have version 4.0. That is the version that's compatible with the 4200 data link. So once the software is loaded, you have two options. Either you're reprogramming an existing unit or programming a new unit. Either way, you'll now need to connect the controller to your computer. You'll notice the red bars at the top and bottom. However, I've plugged my controller in, and now you'll notice that those red bars change to green, and the 4200 says connected. So at this point, if you're starting a brand new controller, you'll just want to make sure you have a new file. If you're downloading the programming from an existing controller to change some things up, you can hit download program. This will pull the existing program off the controller and allow you to edit it. Now that your controller is connected and activated, we'll start by programming our buttons. You should have made notes on which output controls what, and that will allow you to determine each button and what the function is going to do. So you want a different output, you can select different outputs. You can select them to be on, off, or momentary, and you can also select them to be timers. Each port output has a maximum of 10 amps. For any product requiring more than that, simply split the load across two ports. Only outputs 1 and 2 can be used as your wake wag. Set these ports by selecting a button, so in this case we'll use button 1, and then we'll select wig wag function from the drop down menu and select what speed we want the wig wags to flash at. Now see, my wig wag function has been saved to button 1. It's important also to set one of the inputs as your high beam override. So that will come from your vehicle's wire and plug that into input. A, for example, and select high beam override. You can see that saved. Now every time you pull back that high beam stalk, your high beams will operate normally. Inputs can be used for a variety of functions, uh, like dimming the controller. So you can connect your wire from your vehicle to the dim input on your controller. And that's input F. And now every time your vehicle lights dim, when it gets dark at night, your controller will also dim. And do the same for the daytime mode and this will allow your controller to get brighter during the day. Uh, the controller is very bright, so it's uh, pretty important that you hook this feature up. The other default input is your ignition, which must be connected, otherwise the controller won't turn on. And this will be set from your input ignition wire from your vehicle. This will allow your controller to turn on when the vehicle starts and shut off when the vehicle turns off. Um, this is great for saving your battery so that it doesn't drain your battery. If you don't want to connect this from your vehicle, you'll just need to connect a jumper wire from a positive 12 volt source into this input, input H. The other inputs can be used for functions such as park kill. So when you park, all the lights shut off, or maybe a special pattern when you put the vehicle in park. Um, and there's a variety of, of different things you can do with that. So each button can be set to activate one or multiple outputs. So you can determine um, from your list that you made of what out each output is, what exactly each button will control. So maybe six and 11, those are my front lights, and I want button 4 to turn on my front lights. Maybe 7 to 12 are my rear lights, and button 5 will turn on my rear lights. You can also set buttons to deactivate other buttons. So maybe uh, if I wanted this button to be for my front lights and to deactivate white flood mode, I would set it as 6 and 11, and it would deactivate button uh, 3, which can be set for my white flood. So that way, every time I have this button on, and I try to also activate this button, it won't work. Button 4 will shut off button 3, and only leave my flashing lights on and shut off my white flood. Another deactivate button feature you can use is for a traffic advisor. So if I wanted button 6 to be my left arrow, I would want that to deactivate button 7 and 8, which 7 can be my center out, so 7 will deactivate 
6, and 8. And 8 will be my right arrow, which will deactivate 6 and 7. That way, no matter which traffic pattern I'm pressing, only one will be active. I won't have a left and right trying to go on at the same time. The slide switch is represented by P1, P2, and P3. Typically, people will use this for uh, maybe P1 is front lights, P2 is rear lights, and P3 turns everything on. But again, you can program this to uh, pretty much anything you want. So the next great feature of the 4200 is the data link, and setting that up is, is relatively easy. If you're using a Storm 100 or 200 watt, you can use the data link feature to connect the two units. You'll need a power and a ground still connected to the Storm, um, but you won't have to connect all of those tone wires. If you're using a 100 watt and you only have, well, you can only have one speaker connected, but if you're using a 200 watt, you have the option for two speakers to be connected. So in this example, I'll say I have a 200 watt, so I want speaker one to be well, speaker two to also be well. Um, it could even set a dual delay if I wanted, so that will give you the effect that two vehicles are approaching. Um, if I wanted this button to be an audio tone, such as Ecto-1, this tone will play out both speakers. Uh, in the case if you have a 100 watt, it doesn't matter, it's going to play out the only speaker that you have. The other option you can do is a uh, to set the button as a momentary. So if you have a horn, and I'm still having my 200 watt, so I want to select horn on both speakers, so it's coming out both speakers at the same time, and I'm going to change this button to a momentary. That way when I'm pressing and holding the button, it will be a horn, and when I release the button, the horn will shut off. The next data link feature is for the 49 inch and 60 inch light bars. So I'm going to use button 18 as my example for my light bar, and I would just select light bar from down here. Now just like the storm, I still need to connect the power to ground to the light bar, but I don't have to connect all those function wires. I can do that simply through the data link, which is really cool. Button 18 can do um, you know, a variety of things. Maybe I want mode 1. Uh, button 17 can be dim. dim and mode 1. That way, this is for daytime activation. This is for nighttime. It'll dim my bar down a little bit. So once you're all done, you have everything set up. You just simply select Program Controller. And this will only take a few minutes, or even a few seconds. Um, and you'll notice the controller is beeping while it accepts the programming. And just give me two beeps and let me know the controller is all programmed. Also get a success message down at the bottom that the controller programming is complete. So that's the basics of the 4200 programming. You can get pretty creative with what you can do. If you set something up and the controller is malfunctioning, it's probably best to start a new file and reprogram the controller from scratch. Sometimes you don't realize because of all the different options that you have that you press something and it's making the controller malfunction. Uh, so if you have any questions, let us know. Thanks for watching.